Jesus Christ already returned. Everything in the Bible already happened. The Apostle said that Jesus Christ came to do a short work on the earth and to deliver the kingdom back to God. Today we should be living for God and God only and no one else. Christianity has not been real since 70 AD. Said this generation will not pass until all these things are fulfilled. Said some of you standing here will not taste death until you see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Everything in the Bible already happened. Jesus Christ already returned. Christianity ended in 70 AD. Today's Christianity is fake and has been fake ever since 70 AD. And we should be living for God today and God alone. James was a physical brother of Jesus. And he said, Go to now, you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries, for you have heaped up treasures for the last days. They were living in the last days. He said, The coming of the Lord draws nigh. He said that 2,000 years ago. Peter said, The end of all things is at hand. Be sober and watch. They were to be sober and watch back then. Jesus Christ already returned. Everything in the Bible already happened. He said, This generation would not pass until all these things were fulfilled. Today's Christianity rules the world. Evil men rule the world through Christianity because it's an evil tree, bears evil fruit. Today we should be living for God and God only. Hey, what's up everybody? I don't know how this live's going to do. It's the first time I've done it on this channel. so I'm suspended from my other one until uh, September 9th. Everything in the book of Revelation already happened. John was told to arise, measure the temple, the altar, and them that worship therein. Because the temple was still standing whenever the book of Revelation was written. And that's what Mystery Babylon was, was Jerusalem. Set inside Mystery Babylon was found all the blood of all the prophets that were shed upon the earth. And Jesus said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. All the blood of all the prophets will be required at the hands of this generation. He said, this generation will not pass until all these things are fulfilled. He said, some of you standing here will not taste death until you see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. John was told to write the things which must shortly come to pass. The things in the book of Revelation were shortly to come to pass. John said, I'm your fellow brother and companion in tribulation, because the tribulation happened back then. He said, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify to the churches the things which must shortly be done. Everything in the Bible already happened. We should be living for God today and God only, not going through Christianity, not going through Islam, not going through anything. Why are you tired of me? You get tired of hearing me quote the Bible? Because I'm not doing anything else except for quoting the Bible. I understand that Christians get tired of people quoting the Bible. Because it shows them that this Christianity today is false. Jesus said, this generation will not pass until all these things are fulfilled. John was baptizing in Jordan, and he said, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come, because it was coming on them. After Jesus rose back from the dead, in John, the Gospel of John, the last chapter, Jesus told Peter, he said, Peter, you're going to die. And Peter said, well, what about John? What's going to happen to this man? Jesus said, what is it to you if I let John tarry until I come? Because some of them standing there would not taste death until he came back in his kingdom to reward every man according to their works with all of his holy angels. Everything in the Bible happened within 40 years of Jesus Christ saying it. Jesus pointed at that temple. He did not point at a future temple. Jesus pointed at that temple and he said, As for these things which you behold, not one stone in this temple will stand upon another. There will never be another temple rebuilt. Today's Christianity just deceives everybody through government, controls them, makes them think that the end of the world is coming. Everything in the Bible already happened, and it's not to us. Everything in the book of Revelation already happened, and we should know that just by reading the book of Revelation. The only reason we can't see clearly is because we were indoctrinated. If you were to just go pick up this book of Revelation and read it, and know that it was written back then, and he was told, write the things which must shortly come to pass. I, John, am your fellow brother and companion in tribulation. Hold that fast what you have already until I come. Behold, I am coming quickly. My reward is with me. Seal not the words of the book of this prophecy, for the time is at hand. He wrote the things which were shortly coming to pass. It all already happened. Everything was fulfilled by the time the temple was destroyed in the first century. Uh, the Bible isn't fiction.
And the Bible is history, not fiction. The reason you can think that it's fiction today is because it's not to you or about you. It's 2,000 years later, so why wouldn't you think that it was fiction? It was not fiction to the people it was happening to. Jesus was very real. It's just everything he did already happened. The apostles said that he came to do a short work on the earth and deliver the kingdom back up to God. It said he appeared once in the end of the world to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself because everything was happening in their generation. That's why they wrote them letters and said, hold that fast. I mean, that's why they wrote them letters and said, uh, gather yourselves together the more so as you see the day approaching because they saw the day approaching. That's why Paul wrote to them back then and said, uh, even those who have wives should be as though they have none because the time is short. That's why Peter said the end of all things was at hand. That's why Paul wrote to the Thessalonians and said, May God preserve your whole body, souls, and spirits until the coming of the Lord. Because everything was for them back then. But then the Catholic Church got a hold of it and went and killed the whole world and said, If you don't believe in this fake Jesus, we'll kill you. And they spread it through tyranny. And then it came to the Protestants, and they come right over to America and wipe out 90 million natives between the two Americas. And the presidents swear on the Bible. Because you have to worship this false Jesus to rule. <clears throat> the Bible is not fiction. Hey, what's up, Swisha Sweet? Sorry about not having very many people in the live. This is my second channel. This is Derek Jester 2. Not Derek Jester 1, so... I just wanted to test it out, see if people would come in and actually want to discuss, but... If we wind up getting no questions and nobody in here, I'll just... Back out. Try it again later. Hey, what's up? Hey, Roach. You guys have any questions, anything to get me going on, or you want to talk about anything? You want to talk about how to live for God today, or anything like that? Uh, okay, man, that's cool. Hope you have a good day, man. Sounds like fun. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it was uh, not an explaining book. I've already explained Revelation in other books, but this was just uh, writing it as a story. Putting it out there as a story so people could see it, it's very short, and just written in story form, saying what Israel was, what everything was, what the beast was, what the mark of the beast was, using those words instead of explanation, so people could see it exactly how it was. What did you think about it? Alright, cool, man. I'm glad you liked it. A lot of things are plain to see. It actually played out exactly the way it was written. I mean, you could have probably made the book hundreds of pages long, using all the Old Testament prophecies that were fulfilled in it, but... I find that that doesn't really get people to truth, you know? That just makes everybody want to argue over the Bible and not realize what the actual message is here. That it's about going to God, knowing God, living for God. Having access to God today. I guess this channel is not going to work as well as my other channel on the live, huh? I usually have a lot more people in. I'm not against the Bible at all. I just say that it already happened. I actually just say what's in the Bible. That it already happened. It's like Jesus said back then that a scribe out of the good treasure of his out of his good treasure brings forth things old and new. A lot of people try to write the Bible off and say that Jesus didn't exist or they either throw out today or they throw out before, but the truth is, God was dealing with them in the Old Testament, God dealt with them in Christianity, and now God deals with us today. The whole premise of the whole thing is true. 
we just live in a different time. Yeah, exactly. We are at the end of another age. There's a war coming today. There is a war coming that's going to end the three Abrahamic religions. They're all going to fight over the Temple Mount. The Jews think that a new temple has to be built in the Dome of the Rock. The Muslims' Dome of the Rock has to be destroyed. And the Christians believe that also. The Jews think that a real Messiah has to come. And this is over half the world's population. This is 4.5 billion people that believe these things. The Muslims believe that if the Dome of the Rock is destroyed, that the only thing left is Jihad, which is holy war. And the Christians believe that the Dome of the Rock has to be destroyed so Israel can build a temple, so the Antichrist can come, so Jesus can come, so the rapture can happen. And they're all going to fight over it, and then it'll finally end this Abrahamic religion's rule that we've had for the last nearly 2,000 years. Because everybody's going to say, wait, everything they prophesied about didn't come to pass. And then the people that have to find God will have to actually go to God to find him. The baby sounds upset out there. I want people to actually know God and know what he is and how you can actually live for him. Because you can. Christianity today is a sham. It's not the right thing. Neither is Islam. Neither is Judaism. The real Holy Spirit rose the dead and healed the blind. Can't do that anymore. Nobody after clinical death has been risen. He was talking about separating the people. One would be taken and the other would be left. That's why he said that they were grinding at the mill. That's not a rapture that happens in the twinkling of an eye. Him saying not to come back down off your house to gather anything. You know, you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't have time to do that if it was talking about the rapture. But he's talking about the wrath that's coming. That's why afterwards he talked about the virgins, because the believers were called out into the wilderness. The others went back into the city. No, the Holy Spirit ended in 70 AD. What we have today is not the Holy Spirit. It's people scattered into 45,000 different denominations, all claiming to have the truth and all believing something different. That's not the spirit of truth. They give false prophecies in its name and everybody just keeps following them. Millions of people were like, ah, the Holy Spirit told me that Trump was going to win the election. Yeah, it didn't happen. It's not the Holy Spirit. And they'd be struck dead for lying to it. And the Holy Spirit was much different. Sin doesn't exist today. Sin existed back then. They had to keep themselves from sin, so they received the Holy Spirit into their bodies, and their bodies became the temple of God. And since they overcame sin in their own bodies, they had power in the flesh. Yeah, A. Roach, that was talking about the actual armies coming, and some of them would go into captivity, and some of them would be in the city and be killed. The rapture happens after the believers flee. They had to be in the wilderness for 1,260 days before the rapture could happen. That's why it wasn't a witnessed event. Because they actually had a place prepared away from this war for 42 months. And then they were never heard from again. The believers fled into the wilderness. That was recorded in history, but they were never heard from again. They never came back. Yeah, ask any questions you want so you can get me going on this. Um, I don't mind answering questions about the Bible because I actually know what the Bible says. And God gave me truth. Other people mind answering questions because they're just going to fumble around and not say direct words and not actually know what they're talking about. Because they didn't go to God and they thought that they could learn from a book just like we all did, just like what I tried to do for years and years. It wasn't until I threw everything away and asked God only. That's where I got the information, man. It was from dreams. That's how I understood what happened in the Bible. As I said, okay, God, what is this? And then he'd give me a dream. Okay, God, what is this? And he'd give me a dream. We don't have power in the flesh like they had back then, but we've got all that power in the spirit. 
dreams and visions. What is the source of evil? Darkness. In the beginning God separated light from darkness. Evil is evil, good is good, truth is truth, lies are lies. You cannot tell a truth and a lie, because it's like light and darkness. You can't have darkness mixed with light. You can't have good mixed with evil. You can't. What do you mean God created darkness? You have free will. God created light and darkness. Satan was a being who chose darkness. There is no being that uh, embodies darkness. God created everything, and he created it all with free will. He created day and night. So God is the source of darkness. Sure, sure. God separated the light from the darkness, yes. Now you're going to tell me how much smarter you are than God, even though you exist in this plane, and you know that lies are evil and truth is good. But you're going to mix them all up because you have some excuse and reason to. Is it not true that light and darkness don't mix? Is that true or is it not true? Does it matter who created it? They don't mix, right? Truth and lies? God created free will, yes. You have to have light and darkness for free will. It's an amazing thing. What was the difference between Matthew and Luke on the list of generations? <coughs> oh, I don't know. I'd have to actually be reading it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go ask God about light and darkness, then. There's no point in you searching all the time, light salt. I've talked to you a lot, light salt earth, and you're trying to wrap your head around God and things that you'll never understand. I tried to do the same thing, and I had a dream where there was a rainbow of light shooting through the universe, and there was an angel on either side of it, and they both looked at each other. And they laughed, and they said, he wants to understand the Eurasia currents. I didn't know what Eurasia currents were, so I looked it up. And it says, the things on which all life and death were born on. So, we're never going to understand that. But you can understand what to do in this life now. And you can have access to God. But Googling and trying to think yourself into knowing, it's, it's never going to work. So, the main thing that you need to do, yeah, darkness plays a role, that's fine. But what you need to do is, if you don't know God, and He hasn't shown you all this stuff, and He hasn't come to you in ways that are impossible that you could have never known, I'm not talking about feelings and stuff and knowledge. I'm talking about whenever He gives me dreams, sometimes I don't even know the words. Uh, it's impossible for me to even know them. You know, don't believe anything that's not impossible. Because God can do the impossible. So start believing that he can. And if he hasn't, just say, okay, you haven't yet. And still start believing that he can. Say, I'm not going anywhere, God. Come talk to me. I trust in you, not myself. And don't give up. And don't settle for anything else. Don't settle for any kind of knowledge. Everybody's on the internet today preaching knowledge, preaching knowledge, preaching knowledge. It is not impossible for everyone to tell the truth, and whenever you do lie, it doesn't matter, we're not here to change the world, man, we're here to get called out of the world. The world's never going to change. People think that the world's going to change. I'll have to go read Luke. Yeah, that's fine. If you have a dream that you don't understand, you just go uh, and ask again and lay back down. Sometimes I've had to do that like six or seven times in a row. I have seven dreams to understand what he was trying to tell me in the first one. But yeah, you're not here to change the world. The world's not going to change. It's always going to be in light and in darkness. You're here to choose the light and be called out of the world. That's how it is in every age. It doesn't matter if there needs to be lies, man. This is your testing ground. 
You think the angels were just created and put in heaven. That's not true. All those people came from an age on earth. They make it through here first. Whenever you're down here, this is where the free will is. You gotta make it through what's going on down here. That is what decides whether or not you have eternal life or you cease to exist. It's either death or life. But the thing is, everybody's trying to make it out. Like, God will treat you like a child. He'll treat you like he's your father. But you got to find that door in our generation, and that door is God. In their generation, at the end, their door was Jesus, because they were still in sin, and Jesus ended sin. In our generation, the door is God. And then he will come to you and tell you whenever you've done something wrong, and then you fix that. God said everything that he created was good. Why are you stuck on light and darkness? What is your point here, light, salt, earth? Since everything he created was good, lies are good, right? He said, I've been doing that sleep thing, now I'm just lazy. <laughs> yeah. What's your point? If that is what you believe, then go live your life, and it doesn't matter if you lie, and it doesn't matter if you tell the truth, get to an actual point. If God called lies good, you need to throw the Bible away. Throw everything you've ever heard about God away, because he never liked lies. And he's just some angry child up there pushing around flaming micro-machines, crashing them into each other. You know, doing every evil thing for his own pleasure. What are you going to do if you ever find out that God is evil? What would that do for you? You should still be good, even if God is evil. It's never okay to lie. You think everything he created is perfect. Okay? So you think lies are okay. Say something. Like, tell me what you believe so I know who I'm talking to here. Lies are good, right? So if I tell a lie on you, that's just as good as if I do the truth, right? What was it all for then, light, salt, earth? It's pretty rude that Pharaoh had to be Pharaoh and Moses got to be Moses. Life's a long song. The tune ends too soon for us all. There is no God in the Bible is ridiculous fiction. Well, that's so cool, Steve. As long as you don't argue with your wife or significant other for lying to you, that's fine. You've figured it out. So never get mad at somebody again for cheating on you or lying to you. Good and evil don't matter, right? Or do they? Now, if I call my God good, and I call my God truth, and I don't think that he's anything else, and you say there is no God, but I say God is truth, and God is good, how does my God not exist? Whenever you're a God in your own right, you decide what's true and what's good. And God doesn't exist is one of the dumbest statements anybody could say, man. That's as dumb as Christians thinking that Christianity still exists. 
You think that there's not a God? I think that there is a God. Wow. We should go our own ways. That's so terrible. So terrible. We have this uh, chasm that we can never come back from. Who cares if God exists if you don't care about the difference between good and evil? If you do care about the difference between good and evil, okay. Who brainwashed you to be a human walking around down here with billions of other humans trying to figure out where we came from and not having the answer? You go back billions of years and say, this is what happened. You are a human existing with morals and everything else, and set physics and everything else. I'm sure you're very smart, and you've watched the Big Bang Theory, and now you think you know a lot of stuff. <coughs> and you're going to sit here and talk about your existence and say there is no God? Say you don't know if there's a God, man. Saying there is no God makes you more ignorant than any Christian or religious person out there. That has nothing to do with God. Okay, so you know for a fact that there's no God. What a great statement. So now if we want to do good, all we have to do is believe that there is no God. So that's your gospel. You came out here to tell me that there's no God because that's somehow going to change things for me. There's no God. There's still truth and lies. You still get mad at your wife for cheating. What do you think you got to do? Go shake hands with God? Or be like me? If there's a God, he's truth. That is my God. Hey, what's up, everyone? I just don't understand the point on you coming on and saying there is no God. I mean, that's very, it's an ignorant statement, man. You literally start out with something that you couldn't possibly know. Now, I've had plenty of experiences in my life with spirituality. And if you say that that didn't happen, again, something you could never possibly know. You know? Hey, what's up, uh, Don? Ramon's the man. I do actually think that there's a God. But I think that because of experiences that I've had. Not like what you've seen. Not these Christian experiences where they have a feeling or some kind of prophecy. Somebody in this audience's back is hurting. Or some kind of healing that they think that happened. That's not what I'm talking about. But I've seen very unexplainable things. I guess things can't be very unexplainable. But I've seen unexplainable things. That science could never explain. Involving eight people at once. So I know that there's evil spirituality out there. I know that these spiritual things exist including prophecies, and more than I could ever even possibly tell you, and you wouldn't believe me if I was telling you how easy it is to just get in the spirit and deal with ghosts and know about ghosts without being able to know about them and know about what people ask you to pray about without knowing what they were asking you. And you can do it all day, every day, on a daily basis. And you would just say, that's not true, so what are we talking about, man? Since that is not true, what are we talking about? And here's searching for God, telling us who God is and who God is not, even though he's searching for God. Everything comes back to truth and lies. Your name is a lie, according to what you think, searching for God. You tell other people what God is and what God is not, and you tell them that they can't know anything from God, and they cannot be a prophet and that in itself is a prophecy. 
that in itself is saying that you know something from God. So go and learn how to tell the truth. And then come back. Start by changing your name. Everything you say is a lie, Derek. You're not a prophet. That was a lie right there. I have prophecies that I told on YouTube. That means I am a prophet, whether you want to believe it or not. And everything I say is a lie is a definite lie. So try to say one thing that is completely true, searching for God. Just one. Can you say one sentence that is completely true? Okay, you say, I made it up, that's great. Now can you say one sentence that is completely true? Because you're throwing out things, calling them fact, whenever you don't know it. Yeah, there's no escaping darkness in this life. But you don't have to be one of the ones doing it. Can you say something that's true, searching for God? No, I'm not. I would just like to deal with actual statements, you know. I'm doing good right now, Steve. Tell me what I can do better than telling three Abrahamic religions that have killed millions upon millions, actually hundreds of millions of people, in the name of their God, that it was wrong. What can I do better than that? Are you doing something better than that? I don't know why people want you to write something. I never asked for you to write anything. You're doing something better than that. I think that I'm fighting a new evil. That's a lie. I think I'm fighting the same evil that there's always been. Again, are you able to say one complete sentence that is absolutely true? Start out with one that is absolutely true, and we'll go from there. Devils like music. You never read Psalms? They have not done the most good. They've done no good whatsoever. If you think that becoming a multi-trillion dollar industry and saying that you're supporting the poor is good, it's not. Rich people do not support the poor, or there wouldn't be any poor. And money would mean nothing because everybody would have the exact same amount of everything. Rich people enjoy giving a little bit so they can look good, while they steal from poor people. Because if there were no poor people in the world, there could be no rich people in the world. They don't actually do any good. We're going to a new city in heaven, yeah. I do believe in a God. Why do you guys come on here and tell me what I believe? I don't do those, man. I've drank plenty in my life. And nicotine, but nothing else. <clears throat> They've stolen the most light salt earth, cultivated the greatest. They've stolen the most. Let them know your whole new doctrine, Derek. I am. It's pretty much on the screen, man. Uh, what are you upset about? You don't believe that they went to a new city searching for God? They didn't go to a new city called New Jerusalem. You believe that, right? But there's no cities in heaven? Why don't you believe what you believe, man? I 
Maybe I have a chemical imbalance. Maybe that's a scapegoat. Maybe billions of people with all of their ghost stories have a chemical imbalance. We're, we're glad that you don't. Thanks for coming and setting it straight for us. Here's the problem with atheists. They want you to prove the supernatural with the natural, and they say you have no proof. But you cannot use natural things to prove supernatural things. Even the two words are impossible to mix. They did not go to New Jerusalem. They didn't go to a city. We have a city whose maker is God. A home eternal in the heavens. They didn't go to a new city. And we know that if our earthly tabernacle of this house was destroyed, that we have a home eternal in the heavens. Yeah, you said that before, Steve. Everybody got the memo, man. I know you're calling me cuckoo, but I think that it's cuckoo to know of... I don't know why the baby likes to scream every time I get on live. She doesn't do this, and then I get on live, and she just screams the whole time. Oh, man. <clears throat> I think that it's a cuckoo to have so many accounts of spiritual things and never even look into them and write them off as a chemical imbalance and then make a statement, there is no God. Do you realize that statement? You call somebody else cuckoo and you make an exact statement that says there is no God. Talk about cuckoo. Now, if I've experienced things in my life that are impossible and somebody tells me that they didn't happen, even to eight people at once. I don't tell you guys what these are because there's no reason for me to try to prove it to you. When you say that it didn't happen, which one of us is uh, dumb for saying that? The person who has no idea what they're talking about? Telling somebody else that what happened in their life didn't happen? Schizophrenics, whenever you get eight of them in a room together... normal people that happens a lot there's like eight schizophrenics in a house together and they all witness the same thing my parents brainwashed me my dad left whenever I was one do you want to start building a psychological case for me maybe that'll help you out help you uh, write me off as nothing quicker it's impossible to prove anything, so go ahead and try. Uh, no, you want me to tell you. But you would just say that you don't believe me. If you can't hear the truth whenever it's presented to you, how are you going to believe me if you think I'm a liar already? You think I'm a liar already and I'm going to waste uh, 15 minutes telling you a story that you're going to think is a lie the whole time. You come in here and argue with me every day. Do you see what I mean? That nobody can even say one truthful sentence. You come in and argue with me. You say you get to so tired of seeing me. You debate with me about what I'm saying. And then you say, I do not think you're a liar. If what I'm saying is a lie and you don't think that I'm a liar, what do you think a liar is? You've come in and told me that I was wrong plenty. I was wrong for what, telling the truth? And why are we on this, whenever we could be actually talking about things? People like to switch it over to this. That's just your thoughts. Okay, again, that is a statement that is not true. Derek, you're lying, but you're not a liar.
Oh my god, guys, Steve just said there's no God and the Bible is ridiculous fiction. He just changed the whole world and everybody left the Bible and we're all good now. What are you going to come up and talk about? I don't even know if I want to let people up anymore. Uh, even the friends that I tried to make through this, they wound up just doing what everybody else does, arguing with one another, fighting over the Bible, not going to God, not telling me about their new experiences with God because they're going to God, but instead debating over doctrines and never even getting the gist of the message in the first place. Is the present moment perfect? The present moment is both lies and truth and light and darkness. Ask yourself if you're perfect in the present moment instead. Oh, don't even want to talk about my own truth. Come on up if you would like. No, man. Heaven is perfect. It's not perfect down here. Whenever you're born, there's truth and lies. You can tell the truth or you can tell lies. Half of your life is darkness and half of your life is light. The same thing that gave you life is the same thing that kills you. This is not perfection. This is free will. And looking for what is true. Is heaven in the past, present, or future? I don't know. Do you have something weird to go with on that? Like, that doesn't seem like a direct enough statement for me to give you an answer. If you've already got a pre-answer uh, in your own head, and I'm not going to answer it the way that you want. You can come up if you want, uh, Sketchwad. I'm very cuckoo for asking people to tell the truth. Saying there is no God is not telling the truth. Saying you don't know if there's a God could be a very honest statement. But until you start telling the truth, you'll never know. Until people's wives know all the things that they've done, that they've hidden... See, whenever you're already a liar and you haven't fixed things, then you can never see truth and you cannot tell the truth, so every statement you say will not have truth in it. Because every day of your life you are lying to the same person over and over. Hiding from them with your own mannerisms and inflection. Never letting them know what you thought about their best friend or what you've watched that they don't know about or what you've done that they don't know about. Or who you've been with, and then everybody gets on here and argues doctrines whenever they won't tell the truth in their own life. They expect to find the truth somehow without telling the truth. Uh, I just thought about calling it Revelation, Revelation. Whenever I was writing it, I was sitting there. And then Brianna also said that she was thinking about suggesting that before I ever said it. Well, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do that. Because it can actually go like five different ways. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, I know. People say sorry. It helps them to hide all their lies. I never actually have to come to any type of uh, decision. Go say sorry to everyone in the world so we can know that you're better than them. Thank you for saying sorry to everyone else. It makes you feel good. I understand. Anybody want to talk about the Bible or anything, or the way to live for God today? I don't have to keep going around in circles with people that have never given one single direct statement that was true. I 
Oh, didn't realize you were wanting to come up. Sorry. Didn't see your little thing. I mean, I realized you wanted to come up. I didn't see your little uh, request. Did it work? So you want to talk about the Bible? Sure, if you would like. What's your favorite part? The part where it's over. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, well, no, I'm not going to go there. Never mind. I like like Job. I know what question you were asking. I, I think I like the book of Job because it's kind of like every live you've ever been on. Everybody's saying all their wise words, and it's just a bunch of people sitting around throwing knowledge at each other all day, every day, and it's kind of just like life. Right. That's my favorite book, too. Yeah. It's the oldest. That's what they say. That's what they say. Hmm. Well, they say a lot of things. They say that it's the oldest book. They also say that it wasn't actually a real story. I don't know. I've heard a lot of stuff over the last 13 years. I don't remember their name. I mean, yeah, you're right. A lot of people. Yeah, but I mean, like, it's like, according to the documentation that has been, like, you know, throughout the years. I'm not talking about people. Like, people could tell me stuff all day. I don't mean I'm going to take it for truth. Yeah, it's weird how that works with Google, though. The documentation that nobody's ever held in their hands. A lot of people on Google tell you that they've held these things in their hands. They look it up on Google and say, yeah, I've held this in my hand. Uh, And it's not true. They looked it up on Google. And I've watched so many of these doctrines form over the last 13 years. Yahweh is Satan. And now all of a sudden there's documentation on that, of course, of course. Even though it was just a belief before. You know, well, it grows up. It gets all yeah. big from people who never even stepped foot in a classroom or touched any of these things that they're talking about. Well, I mean, I worked on my knowledge of the Bible uh, on my own, not in school, because I, I, w- I was raised in church and I didn't give, you know, care for it much. But then I actually started learning that these things were, you know, they had history to them. So I just kind of got into it myself I dropped out of high school so so I really uh got into the word and then then got into all the study of it and helped me out a bit in life yeah I don't I don't have any problem believing the things in the bible happened right. I've seen things in my own life that people don't believe and it was a different time I'm not going to say that it didn't happen it's like people saying that that orb didn't come and sit over the Dome of the Rock in 2011. It did. <laughs> they deleted a bunch of videos off the internet of it, but it was on Fox News and everything back then. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Strange things. I've seen some strange things. Like, uh, I've, been, I've been arguing about miracles today. Like, someone who was like, why... Why isn't the Christian church like performing miracles or why aren't these Christians performing miracles? And it, it just doesn't, it doesn't really make sense to me because technically they aren't the ones that are supposed to be doing it. It's, you know, the God inside of them. I don't so, know. That's, that's kind of a cop out to me because Peter didn't say, oh, God, please hear me. He said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give unto thee. So I think they did have it inside them. I gotta go, dude. My phone's, it's gonna die. I can't put my charger. Alright, All right, well, thanks bye. for coming up. Yep, bye. That's just a bunch of weird words, Light Salt Earth. It's like going around to somebody talking to them in poetry all the time instead of just saying something plain. There's a difference whenever you're in a place that doesn't need sun, right?
I don't understand what you mean by you think it's perfect. There's good and evil, man. Or lady, I don't know. If you're a man or woman. Hey, what's up, Madison? I've seen your other comments. I just wanted to say hi. The Bible is no more important than our everyday life. It's just something else in life that we have to tell the truth about. Whenever you tell the truth about the Bible, you know that it's not for us. You know, you just tell the truth about everything. Truth should be your goal, and you put everything else into truth, not... The Bible's not truth. If it was, everybody that read it would come to the same conclusion. Yeah, people like to talk about crazy stuff. They don't they don't realize that it gets them nowhere and does nothing. They're not doing anything better in their lives. They haven't stopped lying or manipulating. But they got all this knowledge and they go to sleep happy with it, I guess. Because they think they know who built the pyramids. That means something to them. Whether or not they're good or evil. <laughs> yeah, the truth is all we gotta do and the truth is all we can do in the present. We can choose truth or we can choose lies every moment of every day. People say, how do you know that what you have is true? I believe what I have is true. If I'm lying, you'll have to decide whether or not you think I'm lying. Truth is the only thing that's true. There's nothing else. Um, there's nothing that's going to tell you that truth is truth. Well, I read this book. Now I know truth is truth. Or I, well, truth is what's true. Yeah, you tell the truth, then you go to heaven. And if you lie, you don't. It's really that simple. God's not up there wanting everybody to go become a scholar. He's there, always. If you have a conscience in your head that says, don't lie, then God's there. I just want to tell everybody this message. They really don't know what we have. They don't know what I've been doing for years. They don't know that you can lay down and get an answer to every single question, no matter what it is. And they don't know how impossible it is that God tells you words that you couldn't even know that you have to look up. He tells you about things that you never even heard of. I had never heard the name Yasser Arafat, and 12 years ago I had a dream with Yasser Arafat. I was like, what is that? Didn't even know it was a person. He actually tells us things that we, we couldn't even know. Hey, what's up, Game Changing? Yeah, all you gotta do is uh, fix the lies. God, whenever you find the door that it's God and truth, you know, then he starts dealing with you like a child. It's not that you're never going to mess up again. He'll just correct it for you. And he'll want you to go back and do the right thing. And correct it. And if you ever stop doing the right thing, then you're not going to make it. If you continue doing the right thing, then you will make it. It's that simple. Just don't ever shut your heart off to where you stop doing the right thing.
Yeah, it's not easy. People won't give up their life for heaven. It doesn't matter. You could be 90 years old with, as I heard my whole life, with one foot in the grave and one foot on a banana peel. And you would still hide everything. You know, and that's what people do. And they're so afraid that they're going to lose the things in this life. And it doesn't even matter if they're on their deathbed. They're afraid they're going to lose the things in this life. It's like, what are you, what are you talking about? Yeah, it's the right thing. It's just people don't want to lose their husband or their wife or their job or their church or whatever. You name it. We've lost everything for it. I lost my last relationship for it. We've been kicked out a few times over the last few years. And, um... Lots of stuff. It started, I had my own trailer and got kicked out of there. And I've never been able to get into a place again. So, we keep getting kicked out of every place that we go. <laughs> it's been fun. If you refuse to lie, it's not really a good life down here. Yeah. Yeah, I had my own trailer, but they wanted to build um, storage units, so they gave everybody a letter on the property and told everybody they had to move out by February. And the weird thing was, we were the only people that got out in time, sold the trailer for $1,000 so I could get out, and they hated us the most. <laughs> we're the only ones that did what they said. People just fall into the hands of God, start being honest, that's how you do it. Go tell your past lies to the people, you know, they need to know. They're living their whole life because of lies, they're harboring things that happen, thinking everything there was their fault, whenever really, even if you cheat on somebody, this is just an example, I'm not accusing anybody of anything. But even if you cheat on somebody and they don't know about it, your demeanor changes, your personality changes, the way you behave around them changes. It's just what guilt does. And you can cause them to act in ways and they'll always think that it was their fault. <clears throat> it's, lies are never okay, you just always go fix them. Yeah, we've got a... And I want to thank everybody again. Every time somebody brings it up, thank you, we do have the camper, but... It's sitting at my brother's friend's house waiting until we can get a place to put it. So, we have it. And then you just fall into the hands of God. And you just go straight to God. It's that simple. Say, God, you haven't told me anything. Tell me something. That's what telling the truth does. Evil people hate honest pe good people. Yeah, they hate you and they don't even know why. I've literally met people that just said... And then, like, my friend would introduce me to somebody, and I leave, and then my friend comes and says, I don't know, they just said they hate you. They said they don't know why they hate you, they just hate you. <laughs> it's like, okay. People think that what we see in the physical is really what's going on, but all that stuff is governed by our hearts and emotions and spiritual Well, I hope nobody does take it. Um, I just talked to him yesterday because I haven't gotten the title. I got the key to it, and it's sitting over there. But whenever they came in yesterday, they said they were talking about wanting to sell that, and I was like, how can they sell it? Because I thought the title was in their name, right? And she was like, oh, no, I still haven't gotten the title. i got to go get it from such and such. And I was like, I was like, you guys are going to make me look like a liar if this thing goes, uh... Because <laughs> I asked him, I told him a bunch, because she was the one that was like, make a video and see if people will do it, you know, kind of challenging us, thinking nobody would help us. 
because she was like, your doctor, you know, nobody wants to hear your truth, blah, blah, blah. So she was kind of doing it in sarcasm, you know, or wanting us to fail. <clears throat> so I went ahead and did the video, but I said over and over to them, I said, look, if I'm doing this, I said, you're for sure getting this camper, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, for sure. Okay, because I'm doing this, and, you know, so hopefully nothing happens and she got the will to it. Yeah, I have acid reflux. I could fix that if I wanted to. Through all the physical means, I could definitely end the acid reflux. I could start eating good and everything. I could do that. I used to fast all the time. I did Kangen water, USANA, vitamins, one of the best in the world. I used to be really into health whenever I was a Christian. And I would just fast for a long time to get rid of anything. I used to do all that stuff. I know a lot about health. I just don't care about it. Truth still exists whether I'm here or not. Not to mention I was just called to pioneer something. That's whenever all this started. Whenever I heard I was called to pioneer something. So. Oh, you're fine. Uh, Madison, you guys helped a lot. I, that's why I haven't brought it up to anybody. Everybody helped us get that camper and they helped so much. And I didn't want anybody to know our state because I felt like they would feel... I don't want them to feel obligated to help more. <laughs> That's why I haven't been bringing it up. Yeah, thanks for trying to help me with the acid reflux. I understand. I'm just saying. I, I don't have the willpower to do it. Don't have the willpower to try to live a long time or anything either. I'm not like one of these prophets or cult leaders that want to be all healthy and have some kind of following. I want to get people to God and that's it. And He can do that. This message is already out. He can do that with or without me here. So I've got no rules or regulations to teach people or guide them in their own lives except for get them in touch with God. So. I might ask people for help again whenever they kick us out, Madison. I just don't want to overstay my welcome. That's the wrong thing to say, but you understand what I mean by it. <clears throat> yeah, if we, we get kicked out, we'll ask. But I do thank everybody a lot. Yeah, it would be nice to get back on our feet. But I don't like talking about it. Uh, I don't like people's manipulation. And every single one of us feel that manipulation. And I don't like it. I don't like feeling it, you know. I don't like having to combat the reason that I'm saying things. So I don't even like talking about it usually. Oh, you're fine. I'm, oh, I'm very thankful for you bringing it up and being concerned and everything, you know. I just, yeah. <laughs> so. really just doesn't matter too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I understand caring about everyone. It's one of the reasons I never had anything in life.
Just doesn't matter. I just want to tell the world this message. That's it. Nothing else. That's what I really want support for. Um, problem is I have to live, which I wish I didn't. But wish I didn't have to spend money on that. Because I could have told millions of people. I've, I've even thought about just selling the camper because I could tell millions of people. But Brianna had dreams about us getting a camper, so I'm going to wait and not do that. So, But if I were to put the money we could sell it for, we bought it for a thousand, but if I were to put like four thousand on a video, that would be millions of people hearing this. Yeah, everybody else has to restrain me not to spend all my money on promoting videos. Derek, we gotta eat. <laughs> oh, man. I also spend money on cigarettes, though, too. And sometimes I drink. I went like four months without drinking, but I've drank like three times. In the last, I don't know, five and a half months. Maybe four and a half months, I don't know. I'm not that good with dates. <clears throat> Anybody have any questions about the Bible or anything? About how to, what God does today or... I heard this one thing that the angel with the fire sword represents hell from Genesis. No, he was keeping them out of the mercy seat. Uh, that's the reason that the tabernacle had cherubim set in front of it. So, because people were kicked out of the presence of God. And then that was the door to heaven. That was the gate to heaven. That was the house of the Lord. And there was cherubims in front of God's throne, keeping people out of it. Yeah, he said that's why the present is far from perfect. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Madison. Hell wasn't even opened until Jesus Christ came. There was no fire before Jesus Christ came. That's what he told John the Baptist, or that's what John the Baptist said. That his fan was in his hand, he said, now was the judgment. And that's why Jesus said, O generation of vipers, how shall you escape the damnation of hell? There was no fire until the gospel came. He said, but now is the axe laid at the root of the tree, and every tree that does not bear good fruit shall be hewn down and cast into the fire, because the fire wasn't before that. You can't read about it in the Old Testament. <coughs> Yeah, I don't know. Miracle of God, I guess. I mean, I can see the spiritual ramifications of it. Near Earth pass by. My kids are supposed to be coming today, so I thought I'd go live early before they got here. I feel like I'm talking with a really weird voice inflection today. Worse monotone than usual. Yeah. 
it must be frustration and being tired of arguing with people about exactly what was going on in this live earlier, that people can't say one single sentence that is absolute truth. Everybody's got assumptions and lies mixed in. You gotta start with the truth and then tell the truth and tell the truth and tell the truth. If you start with a lie, everything you build on top of that's gonna be a lie. She said, Yay! <laughs> Yeah, I was I was just asking for, I mean, to show them the difference, you know. Say something that happened in your own life that's absolutely true. At least just say one sentence that's absolute truth, you know, that can't be denied or can't be a what if. Yeah, on my other page, I'm going to keep going with my uh, reading the Bible. <laughs> I was reading comments. I couldn't even think of the word Bible. <laughs> reading the New Testament through and explaining it. <clears throat> but I'm not going to go through each individual gospel. That's just going to be redundant, so I'll add the parts in that aren't in Matthew already. and Probably do Luke last because Luke wrote Acts, so it'll go straight from Luke to Acts. And then I'm uploading all of those into one long video. Like I've uploaded the whole book of Matthew, all the little videos. I put them together and uploaded that on YouTube. So. And that was a pain. That took hours out of my life because I hadn't been doing any video editing. And the one on this computer didn't work. And I tried that a few times. And I tried to download one that didn't work. And then I finally... She showed me one on the phone that I could do. So I did it that way. I'm not sad about God, guys. I, I love my life with God. I get sad talking to other people. Sorry about that. I don't want everybody to think that, you know, you got to be sad to live for God. <laughs> Thank you guys for all the likes, too. Oh, I'm also suspended on my other live, so I can't go live on my other channel until September 9th. So be watching for me on this one, I guess, if you want to join. A big part of me hates doing this. I don't like doing it whatsoever. I did get a lot of understanding from God and stuff. and So you got the one people that think you're all proud and lifted up and want to be some kind of cult leader. And then you got the people who just think you're crazy. People who try to worship you. Like as if you didn't get it from God and it's your own knowledge or something.
And I just don't like doing it. It causes me problems. I actually know a lot of things about God. A whole lot. So I gotta deal with people not knowing that, not having good enough hearts or being willing to fall into the hands of God and trust Him. And then people thinking that it's some kind of knowledge and or just arguing over knowledge and Well, they definitely all hate us, yeah. You just gotta realize there's rarely an honest person alive. And they think that God is some kind of doctrine and not honesty. <clears throat> I wouldn't do this stuff if I had a normal, if if I hadn't seen the things that I'd seen, <laughs> that I can't escape, I, I wouldn't even do this. Because if we're just thinking logically by averages and by people and by all the false prophets and everything and by people who think they have understanding, if we think about it in that, then it's impossible for me to have any truth. But if the way that you got to the message was impossible and seen so many impossible things since then, been told this is what you're supposed to do, then the message is from God and you can't help it. And then you got to talk about the stuff and then seem like you're some kind of crazy cult leading prophet, you know, and you can't say that you're not a prophet if God called you one, you know. You can't say it's not true if he showed you that it was true and it brought truth. So then you're just kind of stuck. Thanks a lot, God, for giving me something that nobody else had before. And I mean that both ways. I'm absolutely grateful. And I absolutely, a lot of the times, wish it was somebody else. I don't know if that's true, Bruce. I really don't know. I might not be here that long. I could die. That could be the best thing for everybody. I'm not saying that in some weird way to make people feel sad or something. Everybody dies. I'm saying people need to be going straight to God. And they need to hear what I'm saying because it's true and God called me to do it. But they should only hear it because it's truth. And then they should go to God themselves. Because people are completely wrong that say that there's no prophets today. Anybody that goes to God will be a prophet. Anybody that goes to God has all the same spiritual uh, gifts and understanding. and Everybody. I don't know, I'm completely uh, trapped. There's nothing I can do about it, so. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Do my best. I'll be honest every day of my life, and if I ever mess up, God will show me like he always does, and then I'll go back and fix that and just say what I've seen. I can't say anything other than what I've seen, or else I'd be lying. So I'll just keep going with it for the rest of my life. But the things he's shown me are crazy, and it makes you feel crazy. I usually don't talk about myself. I guess I decided to talk about myself today. The 
the dreams that I've had are crazy. The times that I've seen God are crazy. What he's told me to do, what he said that I am, it's all crazy. But all I want is for other people to have that too. And that's the whole point, is let everybody else know that it's possible. So I went so long without talking about myself, hardly ever, every now and then. But, you know, then people have no faith, too, that God's going to do that for them. So I guess it's okay to talk about the things that God's told you and done. And <clears throat> I can't want everybody else to have these things. I can't want them to be like, yeah, I'm a prophet. God told me this. It came to pass. Yeah, he showed me this about the world he gave me this understanding and then not do it myself yeah I know I get crazy though it really is a lot to take I'll just keep putting it out there, and I'll keep saying. It feels like the Bible part, anybody can see that, you know. But that's not the part that I'm getting at. I'm getting at a relationship with God. I know a lot of things about the world today because of Mons the Man, because of Brianna, and these are not perfect people, and neither am I. These are people that have a heart for God, that want to fix things always, and always be honest and, but a lot of the stuff that I know came from them not me to me their dreams are the word of God it's easy for me to believe that about other people because I believe my dreams are the word of God That's why I always tell people, tell me your dreams. It's not so I can lord over your dreams. It's I want to know what's going on too. Well, dreams are dreams. But if you're not going through God, if you're a Christian, you're going to see things about Jesus. You're not going to see things about God. We'll be on two different places. Your dreams will say something different than my dreams. If you believe in Muhammad, your dreams will say something different than my dreams. And how will we know who has the truth? All we can do is tell the truth. Believe what you believe. But dreams are not something that is uh, true. You can have false dreams. The only truth is truth. I pray to God. God alone, nothing else, and these are the types of dreams that I have, and if you ask me, it definitely led to truth and good fruits, an understanding that nobody's had in a long time. God really is a searcher of your heart. So just uh, make sure you're doing it for God, you know? People are like, well, how do I do this? Or how do I know if I'm doing it right? There's nothing right that you're going to do. It's about letting go, not knowing anything, you know? You're letting go to God, not uh, did I meditate right? Did I ask right? Did I pray right? Did I, you know? I think I'm a little stumped because now I feel he may be actually listening. Oh yeah, it's intimidating. People are also afraid of going straight to God because they know that he reveals things. And a lot of people don't want things to be revealed. They, don't, they know that God is truth and what's right. 
and a lot of people that I'm not accusing you of hiding things in your life. This is just where the conversation's going. Uh, they're afraid that God's going to tell them to go make something right that they don't want anybody to know about. Or they're afraid they're going to lose something because of it. But yeah, it's definitely intimidating. But it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be anything. I understand, though. I felt the same way. I'm just saying it shouldn't be anything. It shouldn't be intimidating. It should not be intimidating. It's literally going to God, nothing else. It's not, you know, it's not anything. It's just hearing what's right. Hey, what's up, Truth Seeker? But I'm not condemning you either. Don't feel that. I'm just saying just let go. <laughs> let God do it. I'm not saying, oh, you're not doing something good enough because you feel intimidated. That's not what I was getting at. I was saying I understand it being intimidated, but God leads us more and more. And he deals with our hearts more and more. And it shouldn't be that way. No, I'm not going every day at noon at the moment. I haven't even been on in a while. I'm suspended on the other channel, so I hope to get to going back at noon, but who knows? I've been doing, I have eye problems from spending 12 years looking at a computer screen, and I can't switch screens. It really bothers me. That's why whenever I was writing, I wasn't on the phone that much, because I was on the computer so much. And I have really bad problems, like, from it. Uh, I'll even have to lay there with like a washcloth on my face for a whole day because I can't open my eyes because it hurts so bad. And I do all the blue, you know, I got the blue light glasses. I got the screen dimness down, but switching from my phone to the computer is difficult. And being on that long is difficult, so... Eminem said Jesus Christ is a savior. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, what I was getting at, sorry, I'm slow today, was whenever I'm outside doing my videos on the New Testament, I have to turn my phone brightness up because you can't see your phone whenever the sunlight hits it unless your brightness is up. So it's hard for me to go live and do those videos because it literally hurts my eyes really bad. Is it almost time for me to cook? Um, you're not cooking. I'm not? Oh, okay. What am I, what's going on? I spent money. You spent money? What'd you get? I'm in Chinese. Woohoo! How is it that this has been hidden or missed for 2,000 years? Just believe what the Bible says, simple. Yeah, I know. It was hidden and missed because people wouldn't go directly to God and tell the truth in their own life. They thought that the way was some other way. If you're going to sample my cooking, I'm going to make something I'm actually good at. He's good at everything. 
But it's also this message at the end of every age, a message comes. I don't care if people believe this, and it's so funny. They can believe this whole Bible that didn't happen in front of their eyes, but they can't believe that God works in our day now. It's crazy. They can believe that they went to a new city, but they can't believe that we go to a new city. They, you see, but it's always at the end of the age, at the end of an age, the truth comes or a message comes, and then everybody before that for usually 2,000 years as an age, is judged by the message that comes at the end. It's also God's timing. Yeah, he works in our age now, but people really don't believe that. They read a Bible where God did all these things, but they cannot believe that God works in our day. Isn't that right, Mons? I know that Mons tells me all the time how amazing it is because he does exactly what I do. He's honest in his everyday life, and he waits for God, and God gives him dreams that he couldn't possibly think of or know on his own. And he tells me all the time how amazing it is and how easy it is and... You know, and how sad it is that other people won't do it because God actually talks to us and all we have to do is nothing. <laughs> nothing. Yeah, go to God or go to Google. All right, thanks, uh, Light Salt Earth. Yeah, that's cool. I've heard some good things about salt. It's definitely why baking soda works, I imagine, better than anything. If you put a little baking soda in warm water, it gets rid of your acid faster than anything. God probably has Google. Yeah, it's actually always the same, man. The only difference was Jesus was the door back then because sin existed. God is the door now. Jesus actually sat down on God's throne. Nobody else is going to do that. But God's the creator and he makes the morals and he makes the way that everything is. So the reason Jesus Christ sat down on his throne is because he changed the dynamics the spiritual physics of the way everything worked. Nobody will ever be what Jesus was. He actually made a change in the way God worked. He ain't always got to tell the truth. So Jesus Christ sat down on his throne for a while. Yeah, the flood came because of sin. Jesus Christ came to end sin. And that's why baptism saved them. It was Peter's way of saying that. Whenever he said that all pass through the flood, so doth now the like figure of baptism save us. It was kind of like a Passover. It was saying, God, we're dead already. We're dead to sin through the blood of Jesus Christ because we were baptized in his name. Therefore, don't destroy us in your wrath because we believe that he came to end sin. Yeah, he's just not going to do it, probably. It's too late anyway. He's not getting them. He's not going to take them to the fair now. They wouldn't be there until like an hour later. Oh, you just said sorry. Oh, that's fine. I said he's not going to take them now. It'd still be an hour. And he might. If he ain't. Oh, if they're staying the night. So we're having Chinese tonight? Yeah, do you like my... Getting Chinese for you? Yeah. Why did you put it in your ear? I was doing good. Oh, I couldn't see you behind the bed. My ear. Do you like my ear? <laughs> yeah. Nice ear. Yeah, I accidentally butt dialed uh, Eli Michael the other day. He messaged me and said, I like sundresses. <laughs> 
sitting there talking to her, and I was like, I'll wear your sundress. You want me to wear your sundress? Yeah, and he then, commented on your Facebook post, uh, too. And then I got a message. He was like, I like sundresses. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not actually going to wear one. Hmm. You sure? 12, 2019, 2029. I don't know what that means, man. Uh, whenever we got kicked off my live the other night, my notification literally said I was kicked off because of Monster Man. And I was like, what could Monster Man possibly have said? <laughs> my notification said I was kicked off from you, and you were probably being the nicest one on there. I, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Did it sell him? I guess I'll go live in a sundress. Maybe I'll get more people to come in. Go live in a bikini. No, I'm good. I just got a terrible image. <laughs> I got a fun one. <laughs> I don't know what 2019 means. I mean, is there not another number there? Why would you be suspended longer than me? I'm able to come back on the 9th. Y'all getting a sundress and sing. What song is a girl wearing a sundress in? I'm sure Taylor Swift is probably wearing a sundress in some song. I'll have to you learn. Can sing. I'll have you to sing. learn one of her songs. Mm -hmm. the haters gonna hate. I know some of the words of that already. See, haters so gonna hate, 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 hate. That's all I know. Yeah. Well. Players gonna play. Is that what it says? Twenty hours and nineteen minutes. Okay, that's cool. I'm, it doesn't say that on mine. It tells me, like, the day. Like, if you were to try to go live on yours, it would. It usually pops up a red bar and says you're suspended from going live until such and such date. I don't know. TikTok's just weird. I don't know what you could have possibly said. It doesn't make any Tom sense. I didn't say anything. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. I was the one saying stuff. Everybody else was saying stuff but him. All of us. Right. He did not say anything. Oh, got you. Yeah, you can't go live as a guest. That happened to me before, too. Oh, is that when that happens? Yeah. If somebody else says something while you're on the live, too, or something? I don't know. They must have gotten both of us, then. Because I got kicked off as a guest before, and it didn't make them get kicked off. I don't know, this has been kind of a cool life for me. I don't know, just talking about truth and everything. Didn't have to talk about the Bible so much. This is so dumb. What? That's my mom. <laughs> don't say that stuff. Sorry. You're not allowed to say words like that. This is my only other channel. I said it was my mom. Yeah. I said don't feed the kids pizza So I can say that And I said yes I did She said no you said you were going to get the kids pizza You didn't say for us to get one <laughs> And I said oh I'm sorry The uh, difference between sin and evil man Sin was condemned in the flesh Jesus Christ came to end sin It never said that he came to end evil how do you figure that Jesus Christ ended sin even for the Pharisees, and yet the Pharisees didn't make it? They didn't have sin, right? He ended sin. He was a sacrifice for the whole world. He tasted death for every man. So why didn't some people make it? The thing was, is evil. Sin was evil back then. But Jesus came and made a difference. His spirit didn't die. Blood can't cover a spirit or intention or your heart. Well, I'm broadcast all the time. Yeah, I hope so. That would be cool, Mons.
What do you say? He said seeing you on that TV screen in the dream means your message will be broadcast. Yeah. Hopefully it means it's going to spread a lot further. We've told millions of people, though. It's been millions. I had already been saying it for years, but uh, Facebook, thousands upon thousands, and YouTube, thousands, and TikTok, uh, hundreds of thousands on a couple different sites, and other people telling other people, and, and it's definitely been millions of people. Mm, I wouldn't be able to have a show. Thank you guys for all the likes and everything. When are they going to be here? I'm, I'm assuming they're almost here. Okay. I'm probably going to go ahead and end my live, guys. I don't know where it went today, but I kind of feel like it was still a good thing. But watch out for me on this channel if you want. Uh, I don't know if I'll be back on until after the weekend. but Thanks, everybody, for coming in. Sorry for the weird, sad voice inflection. Different days are different days. Okay, cool. I hope you can. All right, see you later, man. God bless. Thanks, 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 thanks. See ya.